We made it through the drought. We made it through the hiatus. The NBA is back, and I couldn't be more excited. I knew when the NBA returned, it was going to hit, but did I know it was going to hit like this? Well, yeah, I, I actually did. But you guys get what I'm saying. The NBA is back, and I couldn't be happier. I love everything that comes with the NBA's return. Day one, and we're already seeing things that I never thought I would see. And you want to know what's really crazy? They're just scrimmaging right now, which means the possibilities are simply going to be endless. We're already seeing young stars showcase massive potential. We're already seeing versatile and different lineups. The crossovers, the dunks, the blocks. Who's going to make it to the eighth seed? Who's going to be the final spot in the Eastern and Western Conference? And possibly more importantly, who's going to make a name for themselves this playoffs? We see it every year. The regular season, that's the regular season. And those numbers are cool. But me, I like to look at playoff stats because the playoffs are a completely different game. Everybody's not going 100%. They're going 120. Now, all of a sudden, you're getting everybody's best game every night. And that could make you or break you. How many times have we seen great regular season teams lose it all on the biggest stage? The playoffs are a different game. It's a different style of basketball. It's more physical. It's ref differently. What worked in the regular season simply might not work in the playoffs. Dating back to recent history, everybody's been saying, Braun can't do it in the West. Now these guys are the number one seed. What's next? When I look at the West, my jaw simply drops. But now you look at the East and you look at teams like the Celtics, the Raptors, the 76ers, the Miami Heat. Versatile teams, teams that are big, teams that have talent, the Milwaukee Bucks. Wait, you guys want to talk about versatility? Let's go back out West. Perhaps you guys heard about the Denver Nuggets and the lineup that they deployed versus the Washington Wizards. Not only was the Nuggets lineup big, it was versatile. In Orlando, the Nuggets deployed a lineup that consisted of Jeremy Grant, Paul Millsap, Mason Plumlee, Nikola Jokic at point guard. Yes, at point guard. And Bull, Bull. Seven foot two phenom, Bull Bull, who was essentially their three or their four. You want to talk about breaking the NBA? The Nuggets would simply laugh at you because they have already done it. A lineup this big, this monstrous, is a nightmare for teams to defend against. Yes, I know it was just a scrimmage, but perhaps it was much more than that. Seeing how effective this lineup can be against the Washington Wizards team could be a step in deploying this lineup in a real game. The Wizards were a team dismantled and not 100%, but I would also say the same for the Denver Nuggets. They were missing two of their major guards and much more. And honestly, I don't think this lineup is even at its full potential. If you sub one of these players out for Michael Porter Jr., I think the lineup becomes all the more versatile and all the more dangerous. Before we go any further, I wanna give a big shout out to everybody watching my content. Also, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. You will not wanna miss another g Light Coop video. And that's facts. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash get like coop. I can't describe enough how much I appreciate everybody that's been watching my videos, subscribed or not through the NBA's hiatus. You guys are in fact major MVPs. Big shout outs to everybody rocking with my content. So coop, why are you saying this Nuggets lineup that's so dangerous gets even more dangerous with Michael Porter Jr.? Well, because yes, Jeremy Grant is versatile and we know he has one-on-one -on -one defensive potential. As a matter of fact, he's proven to be a one-on-one -on -one defensive nightmare. But you see, I think Michael Porter Jr. also has major defensive upside. I think even though at times Porter Jr. gets lost in rotations and he's foul prone, these are things that come with young players learning the ropes. Michael Porter Jr., he's big. This is a six foot 10, six foot 11 type player that plays big. I told you guys this before, he can block shots, he can defend, he's versatile, he's quick, he's agile. For wings, he posts a very elite defensive rebounding percentage, but it goes far beyond his defense. Michael Porter Jr. is also an offensive nightmare. He gives the Nuggets shot creating in a major way. The Nuggets, I feel, are much better when Michael Porter Jr. is on the floor because he's somebody that can get into the flow of the offense without 
consistently demanding the basketball, though he does have major shot creation upside that we've been seeing throughout his entire career. And if nothing else, he gives your big lineup another ball handler on the floor. This Nuggets team is so talented, it simply doesn't make any sense. We know the Rockets and how they love to go small. Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Daniel House, Rocco, PJ Tucker. Well, the Nuggets are doing the exact opposite. One reason teams like to go small is to get more skilled players on the floor. But you see, if you have a big lineup that doesn't sacrifice skill and is also versatile and defensively competent, then those small teams, they're in trouble. Jokic at point guard is very interesting to me because it has all the potential to be out of this world, but also has a lot of potential for error. I remember when Boogie started running point guard out in New Orleans, it was incredibly fun to watch. And I honestly don't think it gets talked about enough. There was legit a time where Boogie would not defer to Rajon Ronzo. He wouldn't defer to Drew Holiday. He would kind of just get the ball and go. And when I say Boogie was point guard, I'm talking point center. You guys know what I'm talking about. It was good and it was bad because it would get the ball in the hands of our best player. And he would obviously attract the most attention and he would give us the best chance to put the ball in the basket. But it was asking somebody of Boogie's stature, Boogie's size to do a little bit too much. And sometimes I wonder if Boogie's absurd usage rate and play style helped lead to Boogie's major injury in New Orleans. Boogie, just like Jokic, incredibly gifted passer. When I watch Jokic play, it's simply unbelievable how this guy can see the floor at such a high level. He sees the floor well for everybody, not just bigs. He's a true player that makes everybody around him better, and it was showcased throughout the scrimmage. There was one pick and roll set between Jokic and Bol Bol where Jokic got a three out of it. The Wizards pretty much had to pick how they were going to get beat on that play. Because you see, Bol Bol is a screen magnet. In screen and roll situations, he's so big, he's a lob target, and he's very athletic for his size. And outside of everything, the guy can flat out pop and knock down the tray ball from beyond the arc. A lot of possessions, I saw Bol Bol space out to the three-point line, but he's much more than a spacer in the NBA. But we do know that spacing goes a very long way. Injury concerns and all, I still can't believe the slide that Bol Bol had on draft night. This game, Bol Bol showcased everything. The ability to block shots and go the length of the floor and knock down a contested three like you're not there. Superstar type stuff, superstar type talent. The more I talk about it, the more I don't understand how a guy like this simply falls all the way into the second round. And at one point, I didn't think he was going to get drafted. Not to slide all of the players in the second round, but man, they just aren't Bol Bol, who in my opinion was easily a top 10 talent in the NBA draft. Bol Bol could have been just 7-2 and nothing else. And I'd say he should have went in the first round. Forget the skills he has. Forget all of the talent. I would take a shot on Bol Bol just off of his athleticism, his raw stature. If you believe in your player development, I mean, why wouldn't you? Bol Bol came from a basketball background. I know there were injury concerns, but the gain outweighed the risk. I mean, 7-2, 7-9 wingspan. His father played in the NBA and was an impact player. 7'9 wingspan. I mean, how many players have had a stature like Bol Bol in NBA history? Bol Bol has the ability to block shots while not being in the player's face, while not being in the vicinity. He's agile, long, and covers ground. Things you love to see in your shot blockers. Even if Bol Bol isn't blocking the shot, he forces you to think. He forces players to make tough decisions. Just having the threat of a big time shot blocker looming does wonders for your defense. Bol Bol was straight erasing shots out of the air, turning those erased shots into instant offense. When he handled the ball, he looked like he was doing it his whole career. Oh wait, that's because he was. Back at Oregon, back in high school. These are traits that Bol Bol showcased. He shot absurd percentages in college, not only from the field, but from the three-point line. He scored in the post in a variety of different ways. He's a problem on the court, and if you think I don't love the NBA returning and won't love seeing the growth and development of this young player, tripping. He was balling so hard he got a random drug test after the game. 16 points, 10 rebounds, six blocks, and the best is yet to come. I saw somebody on YouTube say he was moving like KD and play like KP. Like KP and KD did the fusion dance. 
Now that's scary. I have to say I do see similarities in the way Bol Bol and Porzingis play, but I love Bol Bol's upside all the more. I don't think Bol Bol is going to be somebody that struggles on the boards. Yes, he can add more weight, but he's got the length to currently make up for it. There was a stretch this season where players were shooting 70% at the rim for the Nuggets. You mean to tell me you don't think Bol Bol is going to help out with that? Joker, one of the best post players in the NBA best passers, the ability to take advantage of mismatches, find the open guy and create offense. You go up against a big team, you gotta play a perfect game. This Nuggets team is talented and some people think it's flat out scary. Perhaps if you are in the Western Conference, you should be scared. Be sure to click the video on the screen right now. Be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm G-Like Coop guys, I'm out.